man, this is rambly today. It's been like two weeks since I filmed a video, so I think I'm just getting reacclimated. <laughs> everyone welcome or welcome back to popsicle frog knits today we have a new episode of the popsicle frog knits podcast today is going to be the second episode and i'm super excited to share what i have been working on the past month before i get started i want to say a huge thank you to all of you um, I've only been doing this for a couple weeks and I've already hit a thousand subscribers, which is bonkers. I, I like, I don't have words because I'm just like very overwhelmed by like the kindness and the sense of community I already feel, um, which is why I started doing this. Um, and yeah, I just, again, I want to say thank you. Uh, sorry for, <laughs> I realize that I say uh or um quite a bit. I am really working on doing that. I'm still trying to get used to filming and being in front of the camera. Normally, I have been behind the camera. So, this is still pretty new to me. And I'm super excited to keep making videos and keep hanging out with all of you guys. So I hope you all have some knitting, some crocheting, some crafting, whatever you do for fun, grab that and we're gonna have a good podcast. I just realized I don't have a drink so I'm gonna go get one and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back. I'm having some, sorry, there's, there's a car outside. I am having some slightly sweet iced tea. Um, oh, where's your like going? Can you see her, her, her little tail's right there. She always, whenever I start talking, she's like, ah, oh, what's going on? Maybe as a surprise at the end, you'll get to meet my other puppy, Chester. He's currently laying at my feet. Oh, he heard me say his name and now he won't spell you up. So, so I was saying thank you again for everyone who has watched, everyone who's subscribed, everyone who's commented. I really love reading the comments and I am doing my best to reply to as many as I can. Um, I just, again, I'm just overwhelmed by the support since I've reached a thousand subscribers, I really want to do something special. So I have seen a couple of people, um, most recently Knits by Mandy, she hit a thousand subscribers and she did like a knit and chat where that was kind of like a ask me anything. And so I thought that that would be a good way to celebrate. I don't know if you can hear Ripley, but she's rolling upside down. So if you can hear her, sorry or not, she's adorable. So I wanna do a kind of chatty knitting video. So if you have questions for me, um, you can leave a comment below. I'm also gonna, on Instagram, kind of ask for people to ask questions and take them from Instagram as well. So that's probably gonna be next week's video. I am also planning on doing a giveaway. I just am working on figuring out what that is going to be exactly. So if you're interested in that, it will, I'll talk about it more next week. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can get into the podcast. So I am going to be following a pretty typical knitting podcast format. I'll talk about what I'm wearing, my finished objects, my whips, my acquisitions, which I think most of my whips and one of my finished objects technically are acquisitions because I did not have them when I last filmed the podcast, but we'll get to that later. And um, at the end, I'll probably do like a little chatty section. Um, again, Knits by Mandy does like, she talks about like what podcast she's been listening to, what she's been watching, reading. Um, I personally don't listen to podcasts. I, just have never gotten into them 
but I watch a lot of television because everyone said <laughs> when I was younger everyone was like watching TV is not a hobby but I'm a film major who had a pretty heavy focus in television history and uh, current modern television as well so I really love watching TV so I figured I could talk about what I've been watching um, but that'll be at the end so for now let's get into the knitting okay I just finished filming but I realized I wanted to include in my intro my measurements I think it's super important to share that so you guys have an idea of like the body that these garments are fitting on so my bust is about 94 centimeters. It kind of goes between 36 and 38 inches, depending on the time of the month. Um, like if I have my period, it changes a little bit. My under bust is normally about 34 inches, which is about 86 centimeters. And my natural waist fluctuates between about 30 and 32 inches. I can't remember what the centimeters is, but again, I have a chronic I don't know if I've talked about this yet. I have a chronic stomach condition, so I get super bloated and swollen. So my waist measurement does change quite a bit depending on if I'm sick, what I've eaten, kind of just stuff like that. Also, I am five, almost 5'8", five um, so I'm, I'm pretty tall for I mean, I think the average height is 5'4 in the US, so I'm taller than the average by a couple inches. And I also like to make things cropped, so keep that in mind. Um, and I would, I don't weigh myself, so I don't know what my weight is. It just isn't a great thing for me. So I have given my measurements instead. So I'm gonna, edit this so it is in the intro but I hope you enjoy the video. I am wearing my cumulus tee. So in the last podcast this was a finished object for July. I had not blocked it yet so it was still kind of a little it was smaller and I wasn't sure what it was going to look like but this is the finished this is the finished object. I'm going to stand up um, it's currently very hot in Houston and I am wearing shorts that don't really go with this top, but it's okay because you won't see my shorts other than me standing up right now. But this is the finished tee. Let's see. Oh, this is, I feel it in my, I feel this stance in my legs, but it is, so I'm very happy with it. Um, I'd say this is probably one of the, my favorite things I've knit the way that it fits on me. So let's talk about that a little bit. So I knitted the stitch count for a medium, but I don't have three millimeter needles and I have been unable to find three millimeter needles. So I knitted on 2.75. So it is, excuse me, it has a little bit less ease than if I had knit a medium on the needle size. Um, my gauge also tends to be a little bit off, but if I go to, if I go up a needle size, I normally don't like the fabric that it creates. So I tend to just fudge my way through. Ripley, could you be quiet? Oh, she's coming over. Uh, for those of you who are new here, this is Ripley. She is my silver lab. Technically, she's my family's, but she loves me, so, and I love her. Um, she is three and a half years old, and she just loves attention. I really think that she just wants to be the star of all of my videos, um, because normally when I start filming, she starts talking to me because she just wants to be involved. Hey, leave that alone. Man, this is rambly today. It's been like two weeks since I filmed a video, so I think I'm just getting reacclimated. Okay, back to the cumulus tea. So, I knit this in less traveled yarn 
on their Paloma fingering, which is 90% super fine, super wash merino and 10% silk. The color is olive in from their definition collection. So it is this really pretty kind of, I, I don't know if this would be considered tonal. It does have more variegation to it. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a tonal or if it's variegated. Uh, I'm still pretty new to this, so we'll see. Maybe one of you can tell me if it's tonal or variegated because I have no idea. But I used two skeins of this. I believe each one, it was 100 grams and it was like 400 meters per, uh, per skein which is, it was just a pretty standard superwash fingering weight yarn. I feel like I need to start over. I don't know. I'm gonna keep going and we're gonna figure this out when I'm editing. We'll fix it in post is a common saying. So we'll fix it in post. I'm glad I know how to edit because this would be a whole lot longer and way more rambly if I didn't. So it's a good thing. But I really enjoyed knitting this. It was on very small needles, but I knit it pretty quickly. So that is this top. Uh, this pattern goes up, I believe to a three XL. So it is not the most size inclusive pattern but it is more size inclusive than some other designers are. And I know Petite Net is working on updating a lot of her old patterns to be more size inclusive. I, in my last video, I talked a lot about size inclusivity. So if you are interested in hearing that, I will put the, I'll have a little card. I don't know what side, one of these sides. I'll have a little card with a link to that video if you are interested in watching. The video has timestamps so you can watch the whole thing or just watch the bit about size inclusivity. So mm -hmm. I don't know if the 3XL is what it originally was or if that is the updated, if that is the updated sizing. So it does only go to up to a 3XL. All right, so now we're gonna move on to my finished objects, of which I have two. One of them, if you've watched two videos ago, it was the making of my Ingrid sweater, which I have finished. So that's my first finished object, so let me grab it. All righty. So let's talk about the Ingrid sweater. I am obsessed with it. It is way too hot in Houston to wear it. So I have not worn it here, but uh, last week, two weeks ago, I went to Denver with my family, or my parents, after dropping my brother off at college. So we went to Denver for a week because my parents bought a house that will be their house for when my dad retires, which is really exciting. So we had to go like check on it and kind of get it ready. And it got a little chilly in Denver. There was one day where it rained a little bit and we ended up having dinner at a restaurant. We sat outside. And I'm so glad I brought this sweater because I was so cold, but I got to wear it, which is so exciting because it was August. It was like mid August and it was mm -hmm. chilly enough for me to get to wear my sweater. So exciting. So um, I'm gonna insert a picture that my mom took of me wearing it. It's not the best like finished object photo, but it will, it is me wearing it. So I'll put that up here. And it was very exciting to wear it. 
So let's talk about the yarn. I used Barocco Ultra Alpaca, which is 50% super fine alpaca and 50% Peruvian wool. I use the color 6214, which is steel cut oats, which I think is a really good description of the color. I knit the size medium. I knit it on the recommended needles, which I believe were four millimeter. And I did not do, I didn't do, okay, nope, that was wrong. I did do some modifications. So first one, I did a folded neckline and I did it in two by two rib. So the original sweater calls for it's you do two by two rib and then you do some one by one rib and it's a shorter turtleneck. Turtlenecks are not my favorite. I really love a chunky double folded collar. So that is what I did. And I like how two by two rib looks better than one by one rib. So that was my reasoning behind that. I also shortened it. So I did the body I followed the pattern and then when I got to the two by two rib, I just bound off. So normally there's another row of the little eyelets and then some one by one rib, but I like things to hit relatively high on me. So I prefer a cropped look. And so I just omitted the one by one rib. I also, I have relatively long arms. I am almost five eight. And so, and my arms are pretty long. I've realized that most of the sweaters I've knit, I needed to lengthen the arms because normally it like ends here on me. So I did lengthen the arms a little bit in the two by two rib section. I believe I did like 12 extra rows on both arms. So those are the modifications. I did a uh, tubular bind off for all of the seams. Let's see if I can show you. I'm quite proud of this tubular bind off actually. It's probably the best one that I've done. And for two by two rib, because it is it, two by two rib, just you can't really do tubular bind off. Uh, I followed Bethany of Well Loves Knits two by two stretchy bind off tutorial, which is kind of like tubular cast off for two by two rib. So let's see if I can show you what this hem looks like. I'll show you on this side. So this is the wrong side, but it's a pretty stretchy, almost tubular looking bind off. So I'm very happy with that. So that's the Ingrid sweater. I do want to talk a little bit about my yarn choice. So I'm really happy with the color. It's very soft. It blocked out so nicely and I have pretty sensitive skin and this is a little bit itchy to me. The night that I wore it, I was wearing a white button down that was long sleeve. So I was perfectly fine with that. I had a collar uh, between my skin and the neckline and I wore it briefly another day. We went to a concert at Red Rocks and afterwards it was pretty chilly. So I put this on, but the top I was wearing was like cropped and it has like one shoulder and it, it's, it only goes to there. So I was quite itchy wearing that. So, if you have sensitive skin, yes, this is soft, but it is, at least for me, it's itchy. But to be honest, I find most yarn a little bit itchy. This is so soft. I feel like I'm going to be knitting with more superwash yarns because I just, the sensory, I feel so much better when I wear it. I know that a lot of superwash yarns are not like the most sustainability like um environmentally great because of the chemicals that are used but I feel like just knitting in general like it really has helped me 
develop my sense of style and what I'm making and I'm really trying not to over consume even when it comes to yarn and I will say I do have a lot of acquisitions which is not normal for me and I'll talk about that later but that's my little super wash spiel but the Ingrid sweater I love it it's so fun I if you're new I've only been knitting since December of 2021 so about eight months ago it was like December 23rd I started so it was right before Christmas I knit my first sweater in January and I knit this in the end of July into August so I really I didn't find it difficult at all it does have German short rows which were I, I really enjoy German short rows I didn't find them that difficult to pick up um, I'd never done seed stitch before but it was super easy it's like ribbing um, and the mock the mock cables the kind of lattice structure Petite Knit has a video on her website so even before you buy the pattern you can watch a tutorial on how to do the crosses which was fantastic I'm so glad I found it because I did not understand the written pattern I'm much more of a visual learner so if you are like intimidated by this sweater I promise it is not that difficult really it it was so much fun it flew off the needles like I could not wait to get to each next section so I highly recommend if you've been looking at the pattern and really want this it's it was so much fun to knit so that is my first finished object which is very exciting and as soon as I finished this I not as soon as I finished it so I ordered yarn from Woolhit Warehouse in July and I did not do express shipping because I was like I'm knitting the Ingrid sweater which will take me a little while I don't need the yarn here that fast so I'll do normal shipping and it took almost three weeks for it to get here which I finished this in two weeks so there was a time where I didn't really have anything to work on because I don't really have like a robust yarn stash because I've only been knitting since December and I in the time since I started knitting and now I have not been working so I don't really have a budget for that much yarn even though I would love to buy like all of the yarn from all of the indie dyers I that's just not feasible for me right now so I buy yarn when I have a project that I need yarn for so I could not start this next project right away because I did not have the yarn for a little while afterwards but I talked about this in my previous video about my August and September knitting plans and this was the garment that sparked the conversation about size inclusivity so I am if you again if you're interested I'll link that video but I'm not really talking about what pattern I used I believe it's gonna be pretty obvious once I show it it's a my favorite things knitwear pattern again this has been made by so many creators and people on YouTube and Instagram I feel like it's pretty easy to recognize I will talk about the design features but I am just not wanting to promote this design the way that I kind of think about podcasting is basically this is an unpaid advertisement for patterns because people see the finished objects and get inspired. I know I have done that. Um, the sweater in the background, oh, it's on this side. That sweater, which we won't really be talking about today because it hasn't had any progress since the last episode. I decided to make that pattern because I saw Rachel of Night Sky Knitting make it. So I do know like there's kind of an influencing thing that happens, so I don't wanna advertise this pattern because it is not size inclusive it only goes to an extra large so I'm calling this Astrid's cardigan because it, I have made it for my best friend 
who I am getting to see for the first time in two and a half years in October, which is very exciting because both of our birthdays are in October and I am going to be meeting her on her birthday. So this is her present um, and I'm so excited about it even though I'm not super excited about using this pattern. Um, again, I talked more about it in the previous video, which I've now mentioned three times, so I'm not gonna mention it again. But the majority of the projects that I'm gonna be talking about, about throughout the rest of this video, I did talk about in the last video that I made. But this is a 95% finished object. The knitting, done. It, the weaving and ends, done. It has not been blocked and I have not picked out buttons. I'm so excited to go pick out buttons, but this is, oh, that's a sleeve, not the front. This is what I'm calling Astrid's cardigan, which her favorite color is purple, so that's why it's purple. But let's see, it is a Raglan cardigan that has balloon sleeves, which is, I just, I think it's a very timeless, classic looking piece. I have made this before. I made it for my aunt, also in purple, <laughs> because that was the color she chose. It was a lighter purple, but also in purple. So that's this cardigan, the button bands. It's hard to see because it's not blocked, but I finished this two nights ago. So I really thought I was only gonna have one finished object in this episode. And then on Monday, I knocked out almost an entire sleeve and both button bands and the collar in one day because mostly I, I knit the whole day. Um, I wasn't feeling great. I have a chronic stomach condition and I got sick over the weekend, so I was taking it easy on Monday. And by easy, I knit for hours and hours, like a shit ton of knitting. Mm. Sorry for swearing. Um, I do that sometimes. I try not to in videos, but it'll probably slip out some at some points in time. So I will do my best not to swear, but that is a personality trait of mine, so we'll see. But this is a little itchy, so I'm gonna take it off my lap. But I, let me grab the yarn. All right, I have grabbed those yarns, but my mom also came out inside to take a break for a minute. But I used two drops yarns. This is my first time using drops air. So let's see if it'll, this is Drops Air in, let me check my notes, Purple Haze, which is color 15. It's this very pretty tweedy purple. It has some redder spots. It has some bluer spots, but it's a gorgeous color. And I love how it looks knit up. Ripley, hush little one. And I held it with drops kids silk in colorway 09 which is light lavender so these worked really well together i was very happy with how they turned out there we go now it's focusing i so the pattern calls for 300 grams of the main yarn and 100 grams of the mohair so I actually have an entire skein of this left. Um, this is a, it's a 50 gram skein and I have 21 grams of this left. So I, I, it, I used about 271 grams. So I have, no, I'm so sorry. That was, that was bad math. I used, 220, 29, yes, 29 grams. No, 
Yes, 229. That was my final answer. If I'm wrong, don't tell me. <laughs> I can do mental division and multiplication super well. Addition and subtraction, not my, not my strong suit. And I have 19 grams of this left. This is, this was my last gain of mohair. So I have 19 grams of mohair left. But that's, that's the yarn that I used. Um, they're both really soft. Again, I have super sensitive skin. It also hasn't been blocked, so I think it's going to soften a little bit with blocking, but it's not super prickly on the skin. I'm like, I think the mohair is. This is a little, the mohair is more prickly, but that is my second finished object, which I'm very excited about. So that's all the finished objects. So let's get into whips of which I have four, which is a lot of whips, um, five if you count this guy. But again, I haven't worked on it in over a month because it's on hold right now. So let's start with the only thing that was a whip last time. All right, I don't remember exactly where, oh, I know. We were talking about the also hat. Oslo beanie, Oslo hat. I can't remember. It's by Petit Knit. Uh, last time I had not, I had a tube and I had not done the knitting down. So this is what I worked on while I was waiting for my wool warehouse order. So this is kind of my filler project if I don't have other things to do. So I've done a little bit on this. I'm not going to talk about it too much because it really doesn't look like much. The yarn is Yarn Bee Hand Dyed Vivid from Hobby Lobby, which not my favorite place to shop. You can look in my first podcast for just a little bit about why I don't like Hobby Lobby. I don't really go into it, but they're not my favorite. Um, but I bought this a long time ago. So, all right, on to the next work in progress. So this has been my on the go knitting and I'm so, oh, there's trash caught up in it. This is my cumulus blouse. So I showed this in my last video, my knitting plans, and I talked a little bit about it, but this is my cumulus blouse, also by Petite Knit, shocker. It's a lot of petite knit still. I'm working on it not being as many petite knit patterns. So the, I don't think, none, none of my next, <laughs> none of my next whips are petite knit. I promise. But this is my cumulus blouse. I am knitting it in Drops Kid Silk Mohair. And it is in the color mauve. Move again. I don't know which one it is and I alternate between the two. This is color 31. I am knitting a medium. I've done some modifications though. So I have made the v-neck a little bit deeper which means I just knit flat for a couple more increase rounds. It is a raglan construction. I am knitting on the recommended needles which is the 4.5 millimeter. My gauge was a little bit off, but the, and I swatched going up a needle size and I really like the fabric of the 4.5 millimeter needles better than the five millimeter needles. So, excuse me, I did meet gauge with the, I believe I met gauge with the five millimeter. Shh, it's okay. With the five millimeter, but again, I like this fabric better after I blocked them. And I was already going to kind of mess with the size a little bit because this pattern does run large. So people have typically sized down. So I was gonna do what um, High Fiber Knits did and do a small medium hybrid. So do a couple extra rows of increasing. Instead, I'm just knitting a straight medium on a slightly smaller gauge, but it does have 
a good amount of ease, which is what I wanted. So I'm very happy with how this is turning out. I am gonna make it a little bit longer, but again, I like things pretty cropped. This is where, this is, okay, this is held double. So I'm holding two strands of the mohair. These are my third and fourth balls. So basically I've used the amount of two skeins to do this. And I have four skeins left. So I'm a little worried about yarn chicken, but I'm really trying to trust the process because I have the amount of yarn required for the pattern for a medium. So we shall see. But um, again, this is a little bit scratchy. I'm really hoping, hoping it softens with blocking, but it's also gonna be a layer. I don't plan on wearing it directly against my skin, but we'll see. I'll kind of, hopefully I'll have this finished by the next episode and I can kind of talk about it a little bit more. If not, I'll probably talk about it in the following episode. We shall see. This is, again, it's not my main project, but it, especially in Denver, I was kind of carrying it around in my little basket and this was what I worked on when I was just kind of going around and had some time. I, I took it to uh, Red Rocks for the concert we saw. I saw a Steve Miller band, which was awesome. I'd never been to Red Rocks, neither of my mom. My dad used to go and he was in high school. So um, I took this and I worked on it some. The people sitting next to us were like, they, they were really funny, but um, they were just like shocked that I was knitting, but I worked on this and it was super fun. So also with the cardigan that I worked on, that was my car knitting. So I did the majority of the body and of the body after you finish the raglan I did the majority of the body in the car because it's like 16 hours to and from Denver so and I didn't even do that much car knitting I only did a couple of hours both ways so my next whip is a test knit so ooh, I hit my I hit my little table that has my computer on it because I have a little stool that I have put a lap desk on and I'm really hoping it's structurally stable, but this is my next whip in this little wool warehouse bag that has some extra yarn in it. So I am doing a test knit for Florence of Handmade by Florence. So this is the, this is very tangled because I was trying to put it on a barber cord to try it on, but I'm having some issues getting my stitches onto the barber cord. So they're like half on the barber cord, half on the needles. But this is the back. This is where I'm at. I have the waistband and some of the increases. So it really look, doesn't look like much right now, but I am probably gonna have to frog it because there's been some sizing issues. So we'll see what happens with this, but it's super fun. The yarn is a little, this is, this yarn I've had so many problems with. This is the Knit Picks Simply, uh, Simply Alpaca Erin. Again, not Erin. This is like a heavy sport like DK pattern. So I'll let you figure that one out. And I got gauged perfectly. So much smaller. It's so soft. I love the color. It is not super fun to work with. I'm having issues with like moving the stitches along. They're just, just issues. It's not the most fun to knit with. I probably will not use it again. Um, but if you're looking, I feel like drop spoona is going to be a much better, I've heard better things about that. So, but I'm really enjoying the test knit. Super excited to have this in my wardrobe. And that's kind of all I have on this one. Um, oh, the color of the yarn is called is Alphonse. I don't know what the number is, but 
there aren't that many colors, so it'll be pretty easy to find if you're interested. Yeah, but going, going good so far. I'm excited to keep working on it. Okay, let's wrap the burger. This is also not my main whip, so up until Monday, my car the cardigan was my main whip, but obviously I finished that. Weird. Also, whenever I try to wind this yarn, like I have my Swift right there and my yarn winder is kind of in frame. Whenever I wind it, the yarn flies off the ball winder. I've never had that happen. I didn't have it happen the first time I wound this yarn, but I think my tension's weird holding it because again, it's a, it's a weird yarn. I'm not, I've never worked with 100% alpaca, so I don't know if it's the yarn or just the nature of alpaca, but uh, it's broken up into a bunch of tiny balls because it just keeps popping off. So now onto my current main whip that I started yesterday. I'm so excited about this one. So this is the Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta Knitwear. Also her actual name is Haley Smedley. Um, and I talked about this in my last video, but I had not started it. I had swatched. And I talked about the yarn that I'm using, but now I've started it. And I actually, I applied to testnet this, didn't get the testnet, but it came out pretty early in August. So I've had the pattern for a while and let me grab it. So, alrighty, I gotta be really careful because of the yarn and I do not wanna break the yarn. So let's unravel it a little bit. But this is what I have so far. Again, I started this yesterday, like pretty, into the evening, I think it was probably like four or five. I worked on it a little bit today, but this is the back panel because it is a drop shoulder construction. And I believe I have two more rows in the back panel and then I'll start, I'll pick up my stitches and start one of the front pieces. I don't remember if you do right or left first. It doesn't really matter, but anyway. Um, this does have German short rows, as you can probably tell, because it's sloped. Um, but I'm super excited about this. I have not knit a cardigan for my, no, I have knit a cardigan for myself. I have not knit a everyday wear cardigan for myself. I knitted the Hub, Hubba Bubble Cardigan by Kat and Lenny which is super fun. It has bubble stitch sleeves, but it is in Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick, so it is huge. It was on like 12 millimeter needles. I think the pattern was on 15. I went down a couple needle sizes because I didn't like the fabric, but maybe when it's colder, I'll wear the new video and I'll talk about it more, but I love it. Not for everyday wear. It's also very heavy. So I'm very excited to be making a staple piece cardigan for myself. I don't know what that was, but let's talk about the yarn. I'm gonna grab the plate that is not attached to my knitting because this is a pencil roving and so it breaks super easily because it's unspun. I, so, this is Monchalope, which is from, it's a hundred, I have my little, please focus, Monchalope, it comes with this cute little card, but it is a DK weight, uh, 230 meters per 100 grams, and it is 100% Manchego wool, so it's from Manchego sheep in Spain, which is super cool. It is by, the company is called Wool Dreamers. It's, I believe it's owned by two brother-in-laws who have started making yarn for Manchega sheep, which are not, is a sheep whose wool is not normally used for yarn. So they've been doing that. It's very cool. Again, it's a pencil roving, so it is unspun. 
Let's see if I can find the start of it. So, and it is wound double. So, let's see. You can kind of, the lighting's not great, but it's wound double. So it's two strands. Um, you can also use it as a fingering weight if you use it um, single stranded, but you'd have to unwind this and I'm not sure how easy that would be because I've already had to spit splice like six times because you have to be very careful with it because it's unspun. So this is very much like working on, for me, like working on my tension and making sure I'm not pulling the yarn too tight and it's going pretty well. The couple of times that it has broken has been, I just like had a moment where I forgot that it was pencil roving. So I'm very much having to think about it more, but very close to the sheep. I don't know if on, again, the lighting's not great. I don't, it's not super sunny today. It's pretty cloudy, but I don't know if you can see, there are pieces of straw it smells like sheep, which I don't mind, and I think it's really soft. It's not super itchy, which is awesome. And I think it's very similar to Let Lopi, which is Icelandic wool, I'm pretty sure, that I have not worked with. So this is the first time working with pencil roving. And I ordered this yarn from Montrico in, I believe they're in Quebec. They're the first store in North America to carry this yarn and they actually sell kits for Ozetta patterns. So they have a Miles shirt jacket kit and a Traveler's Cardigan kit. So it, for this cardigan, I'm using, I'm making a medium. Um, I got, I'm, my gauge is very close. My stitch count is off by one and my row count is also off by one. One of them, I have I have one less stitch per four inches and one extra row per four inches. So, but I think it'll be fine. Again, I normally just fudge it. So we're continuing to do that, but they sell kits. So for the extra small, small and medium, you need 300 grams. So I got three plates of this I'm using my first plate right now because I haven't done that much. So <laughs> I would hope that I don't use the whole first plate on just the back panel. That would be worrying. Um, so I have 300 grams and they, it had a little bit of a discount from just buying the yarn itself. I think it was like 10 or 15% and basically it just covered the shipping cost because the shipping was 17 Canadian dollars. So that was basically how much I saved. And so it was basically free shipping, which like I'm not mad about. So that is my last whip. I forgot to mention for the skirt, I'm making size E, which is to fit a waist size. Let me check the pattern. A natural waist measurement of about 83 centimeters. So. Ah, let me talk a little bit more about this pattern. I'm kind of all over the place today. This is a drop shoulder construction. It has balloon sleeves, which I'm super excited about because um, I mentioned last week that I think this is a fantastic size inclusive pattern that is so similar to the cardigan that I showed earlier. So similar, other than the shoulder construction. I, they're knit on slightly, the, um, the other cardigan I made was on seven millimeter needles. This is on six millimeter needles. Yep, six millimeter needles, so very similar, similar amounts of yarn. I think they're gonna look quite similar once they're both blocked. And again, this one is size inclusive, so it goes up to a 5XL, which is great. 
and the color I'm using is natural mid gray. And so far I have not made any modifications to it. Alrighty, so I have talked about this little guy a couple of times. It's a fortune sweater by Petite Knit. It is currently on hold. I am hoping to finish it this month because I leave to go to Europe on the 4th of October. So if I wanna take it with me, I need to finish it. So, not gonna to talk too much about that one because I will hopefully talk about it in the next video if I get this cardigan done. So, we're gonna go on to acquisitions, which again, I have quite a bit of, but I've already talked about most of them because it was the yarn for the cardigan the yarn for the Traveler's Cardigan and the yarn for the Cumulus Blouse. So I really don't have that many acquisitions left yarn wise. I have, I have one other knitting related acquisition that I'm so excited about because I bought myself, I'm calling it my Big Girl Needle Set <laughs> because let me grab one second. So I do have an interchangeable needle set. I believe I have the whole set at this point of Clover Takumi. Come on, come on. Not my face, not my face. There we go. Interchangeable needles. I did not buy these as a set, which is why they're in this little Spider-Man bag. <laughs> is kind of a nightmare in there. But I believe I have all the cord sizes. I believe I have all the needle sizes. And I was very fortunate that when I started knitting, I went to Michael's, which is like five minutes from my house. And they had all of the individual pieces for like $2. So I got an interchangeable needle set for under a hundred bucks by buying each item separately. So I realized that I really was going to get into knitting after knitting my first project and it was the end of year sale and I stopped carrying these in the store which is why I believe they were so cheap. So that was my, this was my starter set and I love them. I just realized that I really like working on metal needles. So a few weeks ago, I, I found a new yarn store that is local to me. I now, I have three local yarn stores within 20 minutes of me, which is crazy. Um, there's even more in like the actual city of Houston. These ones are just in Spring, which is where I live. Um, two of them are in Old Town Spring, which is a really cute area if you're ever in Houston. But I found this new yarn store because of Carson from Carsley Handmade. Because she also lived in Texas and she came to Houston for a weekend. And she mentioned this store and I was like, wait, there's another yarn store in Old Town Spring? So it is called The Social Network. It's so cute only open on the weekends which is why I think I have never I didn't know it was there because I've been to Old Town Spring but I normally go during the week because it's quieter and there are not as many people but I have been looking at this needle set for months and I just like I kept putting it off I was like no I'm gonna wait I'm so driven by aesthetics I wasn't sure if I wanted the actual needles or if they were just pretty so Without further ado, let me just show you. I bought a Lika set of interchangeable needles. And if you can't tell by, let's see, I'm hiding behind it. So hopefully it focused. I bought the Cypra or Cipra needle set. So they are copper. This is the first set by Lika that is metal they normally only make wood sets and again i was not sure if i was being driven by aesthetics which is my mo or if i really wanted them and i realized i like working on metal needles better than my bamboo ones i just the stitches move easier so it's less stress on my body which is super important for me right now because 
I am on Accutane at the moment. This is my second round of it. It's not fun, but um, I don't want to get into that. But basically, all of my joints get really sore. I tend to sleep in a wrist brace just to kind of make sure I don't do any damage to my wrist for knitting because I do knit so much. So I realized I needed a metal needle set and the social network happened to have these in stock. So I went and I bought them over there. So one, I got the needles that I wanted. Two, I support, supported a local yarn store, which I love shopping local if I can. So I bought my big girl needle set. I like graduated from my starter set, which I still use and love. Um, now I also have two of every needle size. So not great for me, like controlling what, how many whips I have. But I, when I, when I showed these, I already have two projects on them. I have my traveler's cardigan and my cumulus blouse, both on these. And I, I feel like I'm probably gonna do a video reviewing these because when I was looking for reviews, I really only found people who were reviewing them like right after they used them. And they were not in depth. None of them really answered the questions that I have about like what it was like to knit with them, what the like slipperiness was like, if it was gonna be like typical metal needles that have like a coating on them if it was going to be closer to wood needles and what the patina so the kind of thing that happens to copper the kind of discoloration what that was like um also copper can tend to smell when you hold it so that was not a question that i heard anyone answer so i do once i've used these a little bit more i do want to do a review because i would have loved a review before I bought them and I couldn't find one. So maybe I'll fill in that hole. And I watched a bunch of video reviews. So that was my biggest purchase of August and I'm so happy with them. They're fantastic. Okay, let's get into the yarn acquisitions. So let's start with my wool warehouse order. So I've shown you almost everything. I have two more unused yarns that do have projects, but these are the first. So these are Drops Lima in Olive Mix. I don't remember the number. And Off-White. So this is just 001. This one's 0705. And I mentioned this last week. I'm going to be using these to make Frog by Claire Gardland because my channel's called Popsicle Frog. How could I not make frog? So, gonna make him this month. I'm very excited. I'm just gonna like put aside some time to work on him. I also got, where did his little eyes go? Here we go. I got some safety eyes, which I believe are 12 millimeter to use. So that's frog, very excited. And I also got some more drops fable which if you watch the first podcast, I used to make a vanilla pair of socks for myself in the lavender colorway. And I don't remember the name of this one, but it's color 914. So it is a mix of a bunch of blues. So I ordered this to make my mom a pair of socks. She picked it out and I am excited to make those. I just have not had the time to cast on a pair of socks. But I bought two skeins, which I have realized I'm not going to need because my socks, I have feet that are one size bigger than my mom's. She has size six and I'm size seven. And she also likes shorter socks. So I'm not gonna need both of these because my pair used 52 grams and I'm gonna need less yarn for her socks. So I'm gonna have an extra, extra one of these guys. So maybe I'll make some more socks. I don't wear blue a lot, so maybe they'll be for my brother or my dad. So that's all the stuff I got from Wool Warehouse. I also got some seven millimeter knitting needles because those are impossible to find in the US for some reason. We go from 6.5 to eight millimeters, which don't 
even get me started. It makes no sense. Absolutely zero sense. But the last two things are also for my mom, but she does not know I've gotten these. So I am also going to be making her a, I'm being quiet because she's home and I don't want her to hear me. I'm also going to be making her a traveler's cardigan in the Will Dreamers Matcha Lopi because when I applied to test the pattern, I showed it to her and she's like, I want one. And she wanted it in the color that Haley used in her sample, which is the, the blue color. So the one that I used was undyed. It was just a mix of light and dark wool to make the, um, the mid. Okay. The one I used natural, all natural on dyed. This one has been dyed a little bit. They, so there are three colors offered, like dyed colors. They're green, pink, and blue. My mom wanted the blue. She does not know I have this. I'm hiding it in my closet. And I'm not gonna be able to make this before her birthday because her birthday is on September 6th. So a week from yesterday, not gonna be able to crank crank this out this is gonna probably be a Christmas present so holiday knit and I am very excited to make it for her because I have not made her a garment yet I really haven't made her anything yet but I've only been knitting eight months and I like knitting for myself because I am both a process and finished object knitter I love the product and the process so I'm very excited to knit this one for her and I said her birthday is next week so I am gonna make something for her birthday so I bought some let's oop, put the collar back on this guy I bought some macrame rope so I have three colors I have a yellow ochre kind of color. Uh, it's called mustard. And then I have sage and then I have natural. So my mom really loves, she like she's bought for a couple of her friends, some coasters that are garter stitch that I'm almost certain are made out of macrame rope. So I'm gonna make her a set of coasters because she she's big into decorating she does it for like all the holidays. It's crazy in like the best possible way. It's it's very extra and I love it. And it's been that way my whole life. Um, but when it's not a season, she kind of a, has a sunflower theme going. So I have these two to kind of go with the sunflower theme. And then I got the sage green because I think it's really pretty and I think she'll like it. So those are the, let's see. They're yarn bee macrame. They're made from recycled fibers. So these are from Hobby Lobby, which again, don't really like Hobby Lobby. I really don't go there unless it's absolutely necessary. And I went to two other stores before. I went to Hobby Lobby. I went to Joanne and I went to Michael's and they both had macrame, but the yellows were terrible, terrible. And I recently went to Hobby Lobby with my mom because she gets decor there and I saw the macrame rope. And so I went back after going to Joanne and Michael yesterday to, I was like, I just gotta do it because this is the only color of yellow that I liked. Um, so this is 250 grams and it's 33 meters. So it's not much, but I'm hoping I can get two coasters out of it because they only had one of these. Sorry, I keep twisting it on my fingers. I fidget a lot. That's why I normally knit when I talk or listen because otherwise I'm fidgeting. But I don't think I'm gonna follow a pattern for this because it's just garter stitch. I'm basically just making a gauge watch with it. I'm gonna use the suggested needles which are 10 millimeter and I gotta do that by Tuesday. But I normally knit downstairs on the couch or in the kitchen. So this will have to be knit up here and hidden. But she knows I went and got, 
I had errands to run yesterday for her birthday, so hopefully she won't question me when I say that I have things to do up here. I'm just gonna be like, you can't ask me, and you know why. But that is, oh, I'm just reading it. This is five millimeters, so that's how thick the yarn is. So they classify it as super bulky. It's 80% cotton, 20% polyester. But again, it's recycled. It says that. I don't know for sure. So. Alrighty. That is all the knitting that I have for August. It was quite a bit, and I feel like I probably missed some details, but. I hope you enjoyed. I hope Ripley was not too distracting. I'm probably gonna edit chunks of this out. Um, so both, one into a Sophie scarf, both Chelsea of True Lane and the True Lane Knitting Podcast and Alex of the Serenity Knitting Society in their, both in their latest podcast, they made Sophie scarves and I like wasn't sold on it and they kind of both said the same thing. Like they weren't sure if they were tiny scarf people, but I've decided I am a tiny scarf person and I need to make some, especially cause on my trip, I'm going to Paris and it feels very Parisian. And I just love that for me. But um, I want to make some Sophie scarves. I'm going to try to use yarn in my very small stash that I, I kind of accumulated yarn even before I started knitting because I did punch needling for a while and I really enjoy that. I still, I actually have some that I haven't worked on in a little bit, but want to work on at some point, but all of my energy goes into knitting right now. So my other kind of creative endeavors are kind of on the back burner. Um, I also really love doing illustration. That's kind of how I actually started making things and like having a public Instagram was illustration, which you, if you go to my Instagram profile, you can still see towards the bottom before I started the knitting content. And I don't want to get rid of it because I, I really love it. And it was a really big part of my life, my last year of college. So I wanted, I said I was going to talk a little bit about what I've been reading. I don't read a lot, but what I've been reading, what I've been watching. So I actually, I've been reading this for almost a year because I started it last fall and because the movie was coming out and I'm a big read the book before you see the movie person. So this copy has been like battered and bruised, but I've been reading Dune. Honestly, it's one of the best books I've ever read. It is so well written and it's so complicated, but it is so easy to follow. Like, it's insane how quickly I can read this. I picked it back up last night after not reading for a couple of weeks and I had a hundred pages left and I currently have like 60 pages left. So I read about 40 pages last night and it didn't even take that long because I just, the story is very compelling to me. Um, I'm, I'm not normally a big sci-fi reader. Actually, that's not true. I read a lot of science fiction. I took a class on feminist science fiction novels, which was awesome. But I guess I do read a lot of sci-fi, but like normally it's like older sci-fi and not like new sci-fi. Um, because technically Frankenstein is science fiction and I love Frankenstein. In high school, I wrote my extended essay about Frankenstein, Jester's party, about Frankenstein and Dracula. So I, I actually, I am quite a big sci-fi person. I also love sci-fi television movies, big Star Wars, Star Trek fan. I am not someone who picks one over the other. I grew up watching both and they're both huge parts of my life. I literally, I don't think I can show it very well. I have a lightsaber tattoo. Um, and I really want a Star Trek tattoo, so big nerd. Hope that's all right. Um, but I really like Dune and I'm excited to finish it. I don't know if I'm gonna read any of the other, there's a bunch of other Dune books. I don't know if I'm gonna read them. Um, also really enjoyed the movie, but holy cow, 
try not to swear. Holy cow, if I had not read up until the point where I knew the movie ended, I would not have understood anything that happened in the movie. Like I knew all of the background information that kind of wasn't covered in the movie and I don't think I would have enjoyed it if I had not read the book. And I think they did a fantastic job adapting it. So good. It was probably one of the best adaptations I have seen. So, doomed. So now on to more like, not books, because that's the only one I'm reading. I really want to read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm going to the bookstore to pick it up later today because my brother has read them, but he's at college and he has them with him. So, gotta go buy another copy. Um, TV shows. So I just recently watched the new A League of the uh, League of Their Own on Amazon. Holy moly, it was so good. I watched it in like two or three days because again I was sick over the weekend so I wasn't doing much other than sleeping and sitting in bed watching things. It was so good. I loved it. I loved the movie growing up. I think this was an incredible, again, an incredible adaptation. It was, I don't want to spoil anything, but it was very queer, which is really cool. Um, and the female friendships and the characters were so well developed, which is just something that like is harder to find in media, but it was so good highly recommend if you like kind of period pieces. I don't really like baseball, but I didn't really, I don't really care. Um, it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I've also been watching Bad Sisters, which is on Apple TV. And there's only a couple episodes out and it's dropping weekly, which is annoying, but it's really funny. <laughs> Basically, like, this is not a spoiler, but basically these sisters kill their brother-in-law and it's about them trying to do it and then what happens after he is dead. And I will say, um, he is probably one of the worst male characters I have ever watched. It makes me viscerally angry when he talks and when he does things because he's so terrible. So be aware of that. Like there's, there's quite a bit of like emotional and verbal abuse in it. So that is kind of a trigger warning, but very funny. It's set in Ireland too, which is cool. Um, those are, I mean, I've been watching the new Game of Thrones, but I feel like most people are watching that and I don't really have much to say about it other than I don't like seeing Matt Smith be bad characters, which is weird because that's normally what he plays now, but I was a huge Doctor Who fan in um, end of middle school, beginning of high school, like huge. I was a Dalek for Halloween. So if you watch Doctor Who, you know what that is. Even if you don't watch Doctor Who, you might know, but I don't like seeing Matt Smith be a being bad character. So it is, that is a little bit hard for me, but um, it's good so far. Lots of exposition, but I guess that's necessary. Uh, I just like show, not tell. It's my preferred method of storytelling. Um, but that's, that's kind of what I've been watching. My, actually, my mom and I are, are watching Friends. Um, it is a comfort show for me, even though there are so many problems with it, but I love it. Uh, when we were in Denver, they actually had like the Friends experience going on, which started in New York, but it was basically kind of like a, it's not a museum, but like a, they had a bunch of like props and memorabilia. I mean, it was like 30% that and then like 70% photos, but it was awesome. I'm, again, I'm a huge television fan and hobbyist and have studied it and written a lot about television and it was very cool to see all of that stuff while also re-watching the show 
because I've seen it a large number of times. I started watching it when I moved back to the US in 20, the end of 2014, I think is when we moved back. Yeah, end of 2014, because it'll have been eight years in December. And I got Netflix for the first time. And I binged, when I say binged, like I'm not even gonna tell you how quickly I watched it because I was in high school and I spent more time watching TV than I did anything else. That's another complicated story. Basically, I redid half of 10th grade because I moved from Australia. So I had kind of already done most of the stuff I was doing and so I didn't really have to try that hard. So I watched TV. I also watched all of Parks and Rec. I can't remember if there were other ones. I Oh, How I Met Your Mother. I watched all three of those, which are quite long, pretty quickly. Um, so rewatching Friends, it's very fun because I know all of the episodes. I can be like, oh, this is the one where, like with the title and I can explain what happens in the whole episode. And there are like jokes that are made that I'm like, that's really funny because of things that happen later. And I'll say that and my mom's like, I didn't know that. And I was like, I'm sorry. So that's what I've been watching. It, it's, I'm having a good time. I also, what we do in the shadows, the TV show, there's a new episode out today. I love it. It's so ridiculous. The movie is one of my favorite movies and I hadn't watched the show. And then I started watching it and got cut up pretty quickly because it's 20 minute episodes, 10 episodes per season and there were three seasons. So not hard to catch up, but it's so funny. Highly recommend it. It's on Hulu. But that's all for me. My puppies are no longer in here. So I'm gonna try to get some footage of Chester because he's an adorable grumpy old man and I love him. And he has not made an appearance and Ripley has been in every video because she demands to be seen all the time. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. It was a pretty rambly episode, but it's only my second one, so I'm still getting used to everything. And I really enjoy making these videos. I hope you enjoy watching them. If you wanna stick around, I try to make videos once a week. I didn't do one last week because I was out of town and I'm gonna be gone the majority of October. So I'm planning on shooting two videos in advance, one podcast episode, then one other episode that I'll release like the first and third week of October. So, that's my plan right now. If you want to stick around, you can subscribe. No pressure. Um, again with the ums. I really gotta work on it. I'm just not very confident in what I say, I think, so. I like to take pauses and think of things in advance. But if you want to like the, if you enjoyed this video and want to like it, it really helps me. I would love for you to leave a comment. Again, I am doing a like Q and A, ask me anything kind of video knit and chat next week to celebrate a thousand subscribers. And again, I'm so grateful and appreciate it. Appreciative. I really appreciate it. And I can't, I can't really explain how like welcomed I feel and I already feel such a, such a sense of community that I was hoping I would find in doing this. I just didn't expect it to, to like happen this quickly. And I'm just very excited about it. I can't wait to keep making videos. Knitting is a huge part of my life. I also love video production, so it works really well for me. And yeah, you can also find me on Instagram. My handle's at Popsicle Frog. Actually, it's at underscore Popsicle Frog. I'll have it linked below. By linked, I'll just have it written below. Um, but feel free to go check me out over there. I don't post super frequently. I'm trying to get better at that. But I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Have a lovely long weekend if you're in the U.S. for Labor Day. So Monday's a holiday 
and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.